Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host, Calden S. This is episode 405. We're going to be talking about Thread Dead Redemption, about mission points, and answer some listener questions. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred instant deadpan humor. Oh, how okay, six yeah. people think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Okay, Google, back some more. Let the cat in because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Outreach for Hero Clues is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Journaling, like always, in the studio is. Your dial for Hero Clicks champion. The Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, yeah. Aren't you so glad we recorded a ton of uh, talk about legacy cards and Disney Plus probably won't have any? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. If it's, you listen to really last episode, uh, we were like, man, this will be great. This will be great. This one's definitely a shoe in yeah. All that stuff. Wasted and come potential. to find out this week, oh yeah, it's missing the little <laughs> well, legacy card text, I, isn't I'm it? I'm still, oh, shoot. just like WWE Wave 2, I'm still holding out hope. But uh, out hope. there's probably no legacy cards. Hopefully Plus. slightly more hope than the hope you have for WWE Wave 2, oh, but... I mean... Unless that is still somehow a lot of hope. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is, man. surprisingly. I'm still like, you know, one of these... I mean, Vince could just die, th- like, tomorrow, and... uh his son-in-law is like, yeah, ship it. I don't know. I have no yeah. idea what's holding the back wave, too. Uh, yeah, as we've zero clue, man. discussed multiple times, we have no we clue. It's like a day counter. Like, this entire time, we should have been, like, weak, blah, 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 since the initial release of wave two. That would have been hilarious. Oh, yeah. Day number like this. 48 you know? months later. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's apparently coming out the 21st of this month, so... <laughs> we'll see 21st or the 16th i forget i forget what it was yeah on that one random something. shady website yeah doing something but anyways simeon what made you happy this week my man so no uh i haven't been able to like stream any new stuff because i'm still rocking a playstation 3 uh which no longer even like supports the normal like netflix hulu kind of stuff i can still use them but they don't get like updates or something i don't know um so i finally got onto the Roku website and I bought like the, what everyone said was the best one. It's like the Roku 4k, whatever. It's like 25 bucks. And that that was all like, I, I bought that. So I finally will be able to get Disney plus. So I'll be able to catch up on like, what if and Hawkeye. And, uh, there was another one that I haven't seen. Uh, maybe that's it. Yeah. That's all it. For Disney what plus if show. Hawkeye? What oh, if... uh, book of Boba Fett. Yeah. That's, oh, I mean, oh, yeah. that's not, uh, hero clicks, well, related, shows, but yeah, yeah right. Not, but also not good. So, oh, is get. it not? Oh, I was just saying that to be controversial uh, and make I chance just, mad. I just want more yeah. Mando and Grogu. Oh, you'll get that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Um, the book of Boba Fett is about ninety percent flashbacks and then five percent Mandalorian and Grogu. So, nice. it'll it'll be there. It'll be in there. Yeah, have you ever wanted to learn a lot about Tuscan Raider lore? I've <laughs> yes. never wanted to, but you're going to learn it now. Uh, that's not really a spoiler. They probably single like file the to hide their numbers. I would have been okay. Is that the Tuscan I, Raiders? Or is I, that... Yeah, those are Tuscan Raiders. Okay. Same people, Tuscan Raiders, you know, same thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd have been okay with just knowing that he killed not only the men, but the women and children too, and then they, <laughs> they walk single file. And that's all I ever needed to know about Tuscan Raiders. And now I know more. What do I what am I going to do with this information? Ah, not much. Um, but all right, cool. Yeah, man. I'm excited for you to finally watch some of this stuff so I don't feel as bad talking about Disney Plus like what if stuff and yeah. pseudo spoiling like everything and whatever. I mean, um, yeah, no, I assume I'm, at this point that the what if animated series will have zero impact on the MCU, so I'm not really that concerned. Oh, um absolutely. 100% but, yeah. it won't have any impact. I don't think it will. Yeah, it's still oh, all right. I mean, yeah, so I'm not super worried about spoilers, but yeah, I, it'll still be nice to at least watch all their hard work. Nice, nice. This week, what made me happy? Uh, two things. I went to a ice skating performance of The Greatest Showman. That was pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed that. 
And then almost as good as that, but clearly not as good. Uh, I went to see uh, The Batman. Oh. Starring Sparkles Boy and other people. <laughs> I think I almost said one of the guys. I forget which one's Key and Peel and which one's Key and which one's Peel. But Jim Gordon looks awfully lot like this shorter, tubbier guy um, in the new Batman. I think he that's... looks like him with a mustache, basically. Jordan Peele. I mean, glasses. Is, it, is that the smaller guy, the I shorter guy, so. but he's I... kind of thicker? Yeah. Yeah. What it's... a good buddy cop movie the Batman is. Um, <laughs> is it really? <laughs> for, yeah. For people that liked the Joker and Rick and Morty, they can now acquire a new personality trait in the form of the Riddler. So good oh, for them. I'm sure, I'm sure they're excited to get a new persona finally. So there's that that they can now be instead of just uh, <laughs> Rick from Rick and Morty and then the Joker from the Joker. So that's cool. Uh, I don't know how much we want to keep of this, but no, it's a really good movie. Um, it It's a heavy, heavy focus on the detective aspect, which I really, really like. And dude, he's brutal. Like he like you feel the weight of the punches in this. And none of this is really like spoilery. But at the same time, he's not just Batman who punches people and, like, solves riddles. He, like, genuinely saves people. And you see that he genuinely wants to actually take care of people and save them. And he does that. And I think that's missing from a lot of superhero movies, like, just nowadays, period. Where it's like, like Ben Affleck's Batman who drives a tank through, through buildings. <laughs> like... Yeah, through henchmen and stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, oh, don't get me wrong. This Batman brutally brutally injures henchmen of course never kills them but he'll like kind of stab him with stuff and like shoot his grappling hook through their kneecaps and it's like ooh, ooh, that's okay all right <laughs> dang dang edward chill out bro um looks like you're minus one meniscus no that's oh gosh, batman bro. doesn't do quips never mind no he doesn't yeah yeah uh actually he he didn't talk like that much at all in the whole in the whole movie like he's he sort of talks but i think jim gordon might have more lines Batman does. Definitely Catwoman has more lines. And I also don't think they ever call him Batman in the whole thing. Hmm. They call him maybe the Bat or something, but I don't ever remember if they actually ever call him Batman. Um, but not nah, good movie. Very good movie. Solid setup. I like I like the world they built. I like how real how real it felt. For some like the failure didn't didn't feel, you know, what it wasn't just like a superhero movie where it's like, of course I win at the end. You know, it was it was good. It had a little bit of two boats action going on, uh, which is always good in a Batman movie. Um, but yeah, that's my quick and dirty Batman review. Uh, had a good time. Yeah, I'm actually planning on seeing time. it this weekend. So uh, yeah, I've, I'm glad I've been hearing that. mostly good things. Um, yeah, I've heard some people say that like it it took too closely after like certain like authors takes on the like the bat and oh, stuff sure. like that. But um, I've heard um, like you know long, really though. good noir film stuff like that. It's long. And, I did, uh, yeah, good noir. It's super long. And thankfully, there's a trailer that I watched one time on YouTube where it's actually just like three minutes of the movie. Like, that was like the trailer. And I was like, oh, this is the trailer part. And that's when I went to the ba- the bathroom. <laughs> Quick. I was like, yeah. oh, sweet. I've already seen this. Awesome. And then I, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, look, I wasn't going to take no bathroom breaks during Endgame. But the Batman. Oh, man. Endgame was I brutal. Got, yeah. It was, yeah. Endgame, I specifically like didn't drink anything like two hours beforehand. Yeah, you gotta so I have to go to the bathroom. You know, <laughs> got to do like a full. Uh, what do you not starvation? Uh, when you when you dehydrated. Yeah. For Endgame, <laughs> I was gonna say uh, fast. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, you got to fast for. You got to fast for for these big superhero movies. No, that's good. I I'm glad because I've become very partial to like series, like short series or whatever, you know, these like hour long episodic kind of shows and stuff. I've become much more fond of those because you get so much more character development and story and stuff. And the pacing feels like way better than the movies. I'm glad that they're actually doing these longer movies. I know it's like, Oh, I don't want to sit here for like three, but also in a movie theater, like I'm not playing on my phone. I'm not, uh, like getting up to go make food. I'm not doing that stuff. So I'm actually You're paying tested. attention. Whereas yeah. like when I sit on my couch, I'm, you know, distracting myself with other things and missing like good parts. So I'm movie theaters still have a very special place to me because 
they provide like an atmosphere where it's just me in the movie for the most part. Except if it's like release night, then it's like this crowd that's like, whoa, I can't believe they did that. Wow. Or like uh, when Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out and Gwen Stacy hits the ground and a little kid was like, oh. why isn't she moving, daddy? Daddy, why is she not oh, no. moving? Daddy, oh. uh, why is his mask off? And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> that's messed up. That's so dark. Oh, my God. It was hard. It was like such a dramatic scene. And it's like such like a good pivotal moment in like the whole storyline and everything. Cause like, you know, what's yeah. coming, you know, it's like hap- Like it's, you know, one of like the biggest comic books, like yeah, storylines you know. ever. But then you've got this just innocent child, completely <sighs> ununderstanding, just I'd rip my heart. Why out. isn't she moving daddy? Oh, <laughs> like, oh, no. oh <laughs> Enjoy that ride home. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse uh, than like explaining that one scene from Avatar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, what are they doing with their hair? Ah, uh, shush, shush. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. That would be terrifying. Like, already Amazing Spider Man 2 is like a tough, like, that scene was tough. I couldn't imagine, number one, having your child ask that. And then, uh, number two, having to explain that to them. And then, I guess, well, number three, being in the theater and then overhearing that is like. Oh, that's rough, man. Well, you see, so when Gwen's falling, she builds up a lot of potential energy, Timmy. And so when potential energy is transferred (laughs) into kinetic energy, uh, some bad things can happen. So this is your cerebral cortex, right? Uh, That's hooked up to your spine and like, no, I'm just saying buzzwords. I don't know what I'm actually talking about, but um, yeah, no, I can tell. (laughs) Uh, all right, let's. Um, we got no news this week. We we were like, yeah, Scott Porter will probably do a Disney Plus unboxing on Monday, and now I'll say it again. Uh, this Monday, I think Scott Porter will do a Disney Plus unboxing, and if I'm wrong, <laughs> well, then it's just like a normal podcast every other day. Then if I'm wrong, because yeah. it's probably not going to happen, but we'll see. I hope. I hope I'm right. But we got no news this week. That's just me saying we got no news this week, guys. Uh, always kids posted with some big pink dice. Uh, die, I guess. Yeah. Um, for so, uh, what is that dice, game? Dice, dice masters. masters. Um, they did drop a Warriors? updated the updated rule book slash updated whatever I don't know the PAC. Um, that'll yeah. come out with the Disney starter. They did drop that. I oh, guess I didn't see that. Yeah, it's. I mean, to my unkeen eye, which means like I haven't like held up the two back and back back and forth i have no idea what the differences are it looks pretty much the same as the one that came out in empire um there are some small changes i've been told but i haven't held like the two next to each other to actually go through it yeah i don't know if there's any drastic changes in the um heck i'm still learning how the wonder woman rules work every day i'm (laughs) I'm still trying to keep track of like the first rule change that stuff so yeah that's fun that's real fun but okay Cool. Well, I'm glad that's out there, but... Uh... But wait, Calder. There is actually news this week, because let me what? let me double check here. One hour ago, essentially slightly after we started recording this episode, because we just wrapped up and now have to retroactively add this in we have some oh, man. great big news the roc says greetings hero clicks fans we have some big news to share with you today roc is going silver and we are doing it with WizKids support that's right sorry this is as much enthusiasm as i can muster right now um understandable no, not not because this isn't good news, but because uh, I just got re- done recording a podcast and I'm out of coffee. That's why. No, you've uh, been attacked by your, <laughs> your kitten. <laughs> yeah, she did attack me just now. Yeah. Uh, the ROC WizKids program that has been on pause for two years is now resuming. Parts of our upcoming sets will be familiar. Our upcoming events, not events. sets. Yeah. yeah, events will be familiar and parts will be fresh. How so? Mm-hmm. We look right. forward to experiencing it right along with all of our players. There will be follow-up announcements with further details over the next few weeks. For now, here's the things a future ROC champion will want to know. 
<laughs> future ROs. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read through like uh, two of these small ones, I guess. Format. As referenced in the first line, ROC is going silver. That means their official format is Silver Age for these events. So maybe all these events will be Silver Age. Um, probably, it looks like. What is Silver Age? Silver Age begins with Superior Foes of Spider-Man. To simplify it, all cards that have a dial on the back are legal for play. Keep your eyes peeled for clarifications to the watch list leading to up to official events. Yeah, still not uh, that's sure really awesome. ID cards are going to be legal, so... Hope they aren't. Yeah, that'll be... That's Here's probably the most interesting thing to me, because yeah. I do not care about much, but that'll be, like, something that matters pretty big. Hopefully, um, these erratas are actually, like... Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hopefully they fix problem things like you know, mind, uh this gracious Surter, you know, all that stuff, how old Surter is played, how so you mind is played, how man with God the is played. with the ROC uh, going silver, does this mean that they're gonna restart their map program? Because would they be printing Silver Age maps that aren't legal for WizKid events but are legal for silver events? I don't know. That's, in, that's, a that's great interesting. Question. This is yeah. We don't have a ton of information. Obviously, we could ask, uh, but I hey, do not care to. So, let's look at uh, map legality. Map legality. WizKids maps beginning with Superior Foes of Spider-Man and ROC maps beginning in January 2019 will be used for our legal playlist. A complete list of Silver Age legal and Silver Age non-legal maps will be posted on the ROC website. As usual, some maps, especially those with special rules, will be prohibited. I'm okay. curious if the whole Windows doors thing, yeah. they are going to still um, limit those ones and not have those maps. Beginning That's with Superior curious. Foes of Spider-Man and ROC maps beginning in January 2019. And what, going to modern? Did the ROC... So here's the thing I don't know. When ROC was like put on the, the bench along with special powers or whatever, uh, certain powers, when they were benched, did they make any new maps for a while? Or do they even bother? I like, um, genuinely don't know. Yeah. Because mm. oh, yeah. question. Because I'm I'm assuming when ROC got the deal with WizKids originally, it like retroactively brought in like three years worth of ROC maps or something like that. Uh, but yeah, interesting. We'll see. I mean, I guess Silver Age those at least those ones that were legal before are still going to be legal even after rotation. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, further map legality, ROC maps with the WizKids logo will be Silver Age legal for ROC and WizKids. This includes prize maps and purchasable maps. So I'm curious if that still means does not clarify that, it for me. But well, I'm curious if this means that any ROC map they make now is no longer modern legal and only legal for silver. That's, that's see, that's, that's how I would started? read it. But then doesn't right. that also disqualify? Because like, there's a lot of ROC maps, like the old championship maps did not have the WizKids logo, right? Oh, true. Yeah. Like they weren't, like that was mm. before the partnership, they didn't have the logo. Uh, prize right. map availability, all ROC prize maps will be made available for purchase in the Gamer Mats store at a later date. Mm. This will be no greater than three months after release. So win your prize and three months later buy your prize. This will ensure proper distribution to players. The purchasable, purchasable map will be cosmetically different from the prize map, but functionally yeah. the exact same. Uh, he, I added that last part, of course, but um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talking about points here, this is something I was curious about since I won a WKO right before uh, Despotelis was unleashed into the world. Uh, so anyways, he says points. WKA points that players have accumulated are now active. These points allowed you to qualify for the WizKids, Nats, and Worlds. There's a big chance, though, at least for this year, that instead of 100 points needed to get into Nationals and 200 enter Worlds, those are now 25 for Nationals and 50 to Worlds. Uh, they really want people to show up to Worlds. That is awesome. That is an incredibly, incredibly low bar um, that they want people to show up for Worlds. I, I yeah. think that's... It's, I don't know, it's a little scary, but it's also good. It's like, let's, they want a really strong comeback. To be for fair, I highly doubt, into. highly doubt that this will change the number of Worlds attendees. Might. Like, just I, being pre-qualified for Worlds or Nats normally does not change how many people let go. Like, I've gone into fair Nationals enough. and Worlds qualified and not played in, like, the bigger events. Like, I'll play right. in Team Seal, I mean, but I don't play in, on, you know, 
um, not qualified. Yeah. And then, and also there's plenty of people that play in like the pre qualifiers. So even if, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It'll be interesting, but I, I don't think just being pre qualified for either. Cause it's not like magic. It's not like you have to be qualified just to show up. You can show up and qualify right. and play in BRs and do whatever else. So that's not at all like a barrier to entry, but it is interesting to see if, you know, maybe that'll push more people to, to show up. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, the ROC cup will continue to be in May every year. Last year we ran a very successful event online with Scott Porter. It was called the, uh, hero clicks for Huntington's tournament or heroes mm-hmm. for Huntington's tournament. Family is everything, but, uh, a very successful event online with Scott Porter to raise money for charity this year. We will be live at Lucky Dice Cafe, and Scott Porter will be there with us. Great selling point, I guess. The Heroes for Huntington's tournament will be a Silver Age National Championship with all proceeds going to Huntington's. Let's hope so. We will also be running a Silver Age team-constructed tournament with an extreme Highlander rule along with side events and battle royals. One dollar per each entry from these events will also go to Huntington's. So... All proceeds, but then also one dollar. Is that like one additional dollar on top of all proceeds? Like, are you gonna are you gonna match that? Like my entry, I don't. Will yeah, so $1? I'm, I'm very interested to get a better breakdown as far as how much money I am spending at this event is actually going to charity. Because that's well, really going to depend on whether I yeah. actually show up. Um, if that's this is huge. like, because I'm judging off of like previous entries, they're about you know, somewhere between 15 to like $30, depending on like what kind of event and stuff. Um, I think the ROC worlds was like $25 entry or something along those lines. So if it's like $25 and it's $1 per entry out of that 25, but it, then they did say all proceeds heroes for hunting tournament will be a silver age nationals championship with all proceeds going to Huntington's or is it all proceeds from that and then all the side events, $1 from the side events will be going to Huntington's? Uh, that makes the most sense, I guess. $1 per entry for the side events, the Silver Age teams, Extreme Highlander, and Battle Royals. That makes the most sense to me. It's uh, a little low by my opinion, but... Yeah, you know, I think so. Just... I'm a little bit generous when it comes to charity, so I guess there's a difference there. Uh, yeah, there I, will also be yeah. a charity auction that will both be live and online with proceeds going to Huntington's. We will begin Thursday night, May 5th, and end that Sunday night, May 8th. Expect unbelievable prizing. And okay. then down in the comments, let's see. To go along with this, down in the comments, uh, sure. someone asked, last year, Scott Porter had talked about maintaining some online component to the hero clicks for hunting event, especially for non-Americans and folks who couldn't travel. Um, so they responded, the ROC responded, the auction will be available to those, oh, will be a avi- available to those present and anyone online. We have talked about running some online BRs the weekend before or after we will not be capable to run anything while running the live event. It would also be just a little of an overload for us to attempt to run a large event online just before or after the prize giveaways that occurred last year online may or may not occur. We are talking on that one. So even though the expect unbelievable prizing, the prizing from last year's online event may or may not happen. So expect unbelievable prizing. You might not believe it. It might have a pretty big problem. (laughs) with that just as yeah. in general this is like my um, issue with all of these posts whether it's whiz kids or like these larger glute groups like this doing things it's just like i end up with more questions than answers every single time yes um not true it's like you know it's, uh, i can't remember what post it was when it was just like big things coming soon or something like that and i was like why even post about it then just wait until the big thing happens and we have the full story because i i don't know yeah not to knock it too much but yeah that's (laughs) i would like a little bit more information on like uh you know if the if the 
what was it design a legacy card become a switch click if all of those kind of things are still prizing um that'd be interesting if not you know i don't think it'll detract too much from prizing but it'd be interesting to at least see absolutely where are we uh silver age watch list that where we're at right now yeah the Silver Watch List is being updated now by WizKids with erratas and bands. This will be released by WizKids very soon. Um, I hope so. Um, this is the one big thing about once things get rotated to Silver, especially with the new rules changed last year, that this needed to change. Uh, there's tons of Silver stuff that just didn't work correctly. Uh, thanks. I mean, as you know, WizKids had to put out a ton of rules changes for stuff in modern and potential rules changes for stuff that was modern at the time but then they never fixed it because it rotated so hopefully all of that is figured out uh, i do want silver to be a viable format anything but modern is is always fun to play and reach back and play so hopefully yes this is a very good errata in bands hopefully you no know, ban on id cards whatever else and hopefully some very solid erratas and stuff to make figures uh, playable in this current new rules format post ww80 uh, for stores, Winamap kits will be available for purchase as soon as all product is received. And he's saying that's going to look like April. Winamap online events will begin in April as well. Uh, qualifier kits will be available for purchase in April, but will not be scheduled prior to June 1st. And rock states will occur in the fourth quarter of this year. So what is that, like October, December, November? Is that right? Something right yeah. around there, yeah. Um, around that quarter, so... That's when you can start looking for state tournaments. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'm just going to keep going here. To kick things off, there will be regional events occurring in late April that will feed directly into the Rock Cup Heroes for Huntington Silver Age National Championship. Winners of these tournaments qualify into the ROC Cup Finals. These events will be Silver Age 300-point tournaments with Battle Royale side events. And these are the locations. So first of all, the first one we see really quickly is the Kilted Classic in Indiana, which is now Silver marketed. Age? Is now Silver Age. So it was not marketed that way. And no. Shortly after we recorded this, PJ did clarify that that event was not changed. So it is not Silver. It will be a Modern Age event. It it It's really rough. And I understand um, that thing and whatever, whoever's relationship with Howard and all that stuff to now make it an ROC event. But I mean, I made plans to go to that event when it was Modern Age. And I'm a little sketchy on it being Silver Age now. Um, yeah, I have not I played enough. I mean, I obviously play casually, so I play with Silver Age elements constantly, Golden Age elements yeah. constantly, stuff like that. I have not built anything competitively Silver Age yeah. at all. So, like, I, I am very... I to do it. Yeah. yeah, I'm very curious. I'll have to look at, like, the ban or the errata ban list, whatever, for Silver right. Age, and then I'm oh. extremely curious as to what might like be worth playing because honestly most of the time it falls to like mostly modern age stuff and like one or two really good silver age elements so like it'll probably be i mean this also opens up quite a few options for swaps like oh gosh that's a gross so amount of options almost yeah, too many to right. actually sideline but that is painful um, yeah Ugh. Silver Age it'll swap. be I, very interesting. Oh, man, X Men is going to be so strong. I already hate X Men so much, but it's going to be so strong in Silver. Like, there's no way it can't be with XXS. I mean, at least you can't up. like Headmasters can't perplex up damage, so there is that. I guess so. But, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they're definitely going to be able to hit at least. Um, but yeah, this is really rough news to hear. When I was excited for this event, and I've been practicing Modern Age, and now. I have to. I can't even practice silver until I see an errata or ban list. And start yeah. looking at it, sure, preemptively a little bit. Yeah, but I'll, anyway, I'll have to that's start just, going through and. Yeah, I I don't even know where to start, the, but yeah, the one bummer. That's just the one bummer about that event specifically. Uh, so that's April twenty third. All the I really wish they would have had these in order by date. That'd have been so yeah. helpful. Um, all the April twenty third events are Which Kilted Classic in Kokomo, Indiana. Three, Highlander four, games. five, six, April twenty third events. Yeah. Um, so Highlander Games in Boontown, Boonton, New Jersey, uh, Space Cadets Gaming uh, in Oak Ridge, North Texas, Gongai Games in Beaverton, Oregon, the Comic Dimension in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Smetrak Games in Longmont, uh, Longmount, Longmont, Colorado. The April 16th one is going to be in Lucky Dice Cafe in Huntsville, Alabama. 
the April 30th. We have two April 30th events. That is going to be in House Rules Gaming in Kissimmee, Florida, and in Comic Cult in Torrance, California. Uh, if you want to do the last little read here, Simeon. Yeah. That should cover, that should about cover everything initially. Oh, wait. You may want to hear about the prizing. Uh, outside of the ROC prizing that includes maps, ROC card sleeves, and dice, we will have WizKids prizing that will include ID cards, which is interesting. All Mandarin rings and convention exclusives. Um, so all ID cards are rotated except for silver. We, they may be viable, they might not be. Uh, but either way, it's kind of interesting that like Mandarin rings should be rotating this year if we follow like the track of, or the trend of how rotation works id cards are rotated uh of course mandarin rings will probably be allowed in silver so that's you know an option there um the convention exclusives are listed as raven kyle rayner so 2019 2019 superman prime 2019 batman bat Knight, 2018 Orion 2018, Joker 2018, Lalandra 2019, Samurai Spider Gwen and Spider Carnage, I believe 2017. Uh, Ultimate Warrior, of course, was um, released at Origins, I think. I don't know. Um, yeah. And never before released, John Cena, You Can't See Me, which <sighs> we've referred to as the meme Cena. Uh, interesting. Yeah. We once again get a WWE property licensed release kind of thing uh of course we have no idea what the dial is probably won't know until i don't know april 16th or 15th or something yeah probably Um, around that then we'll be should like just like uh yeah just like you know good old uh lady phoenix how we didn't see that for quite a while even though it was listed as surprising um she's still not modern i'm obviously if you can tell my tone of voice i am very tentative about this I did not want to see the Hero Clicks for Huntington's event go to an ROC event. I mean, like, I didn't want to see it go to Lucky Dice Cafe. Not because I don't want to travel, but it's just a lot harder to get that many people to a local venue. So I knew as soon as, like, we were into, or, like, you know, hearing them talk about making it an in person event. I was like, oh, so we're we're shooting for less people to be involved. Great. Um, right. That's it's my main concern is just doing the auction online. Like the auction obviously will probably raise hopefully about the same as it did last year. But all the entries, all that stuff, we're just going to have way less people. Um, and I, you know, I just don't want to shortchange our community by doing an in-person event for and for what benefit like it's there's just no benefit to doing something like that in person compared to because then there's so many there's so many reasons i don't like this so i will have to now to go to this event i'll have to either drive or do a plane ticket that's money that i would be spending on charity that i'm now spending just to get there now i could just stay home and do like the auctions and stuff like that i could just stay home and just do- like donate directly but i like i want it to be like the community that's pushing this uh, that's like what i was hoping it would stay i was hoping it would stay mostly online and maybe have like some in person elements instead of being mostly in person with some online elements potentially online but yeah, that that means like the the guy that won what was it TJ that won the the best like family build last year probably won't be able to attend this, and that's sad. Like that just sucks. We're just we're limiting our pool of people that can play. Um, it was cool like talking to people from Australia last year when I was playing in the tournament, and I highly doubt anyone from Australia is gonna head down to Huntsville, Alabama, for one day. Just, I don't know. That's the one thing that I'm really upset with. Obviously, I can't say too much more until we hear more. It's cool that we're getting the meme Cena in some form or fashion. It's awesome. I'd really like to have a better rollout for those. Like, Lady Phoenix is still in, like, such small release state that it's almost, like, unseen anywhere. It's cool that Silver Age is finally being pushed. It's weird that all these events that were already planned are now being switched to silver, I guess. 
because I'm also pretty sure the Gong Guy one was like a 3v3 or 2v2 or something, and now it's going to be silver something or other. Uh, just weird. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I'll remain optimistic. I just have a lot of questions and a lot of concerns because, yeah, I feel like we're we're going to shortchange our community by forcing – well, not forcing, but we're going to shortchange our community by funneling a much smaller – amount to a location instead of just doing it online like last year but that being said it's cool to see that worlds and nationals are probably going to happen so yes. there's that yes. to maybe get on more of the um different end not so much devil's advocate but just looking at it from a different perspective here uh, i hate online play online play yes allows more people to play but it sucks and it is to me I always felt very soulless, so I am okay with an in-person event, but I still agree with what Simeon says. That brings that just bottlenecks the amount of people that are well, going to be able to actually show up. Yeah, when we so, when we were, and I'm not gonna, I'm not saying we as in me and other people, but when others were discussing it um, last year, like during the event, it really sounded like if it was going to be live, like if it was going to be at a location. Uh, in person, it sounded like it would also still be online. Like the the so the sole focus was going to be to do some sort of crossover or both in some kind of form or fashion. Um, and so it's like I would have preferred to do the in person play in any case. Uh, I did the online play just to like support the charity and just to like hang out with people and stuff like that that were also doing that. Uh, I thought it was a fun build, and I really wanted to participate. And I agree with that, but I would, yeah, much rather prefer to play in person. Now, I think if I think one hundred percent, it should be both online and in person. Yeah, I think it absolutely should be both. I think them saying they can't do it the weekend before, the weekend after is idiotic. I know it's a yeah. lot to organize a tournament. Don't get me wrong; we've both organized tournaments before. They were both online tournaments. Well, here's and the thing: yes, you've got it like can be hectic. But You've got how many you. people that are capable of doing this? Well, exactly. You've got that, Brad, right? who runs, uh, you know, easily. He runs tournaments every, well, roughly every week. Um, yeah. You've got if you ask the Brad Cast that have done multiple do the online, online thing, tournaments. That'll be fine. Yeah, you know. I mean, like, you what do you, if you need judges? Like, you've got volunteer judges that. I mean, obviously, it's never going to be perfect, but you just kick it off and. You don't even have to do like huge prizing, you know, just do something, no, just something small. the same and week or the week like, after or whatever, just to get all those people that want to participate in the door. And I mean, battle Royals are one thing that's cool. Um, it's just, it's not the same as a tournament, like, and especially online, online battle Royals kind of suck because they're like, Oh, if you, uh, if you accidentally pulled two of the same figure, let me know so I can, you know, change that random number generator to something that actually works this time or whatever. Because wow. that, that happened a few times where uh, people would open packs and have the same figures. I don't know. There's definitely con community that would be willing to be involved and probably do it for free. I mean, anyone that wouldn't do any part of charity for free is probably not worth having on the team. Um, that goes for like any level of involvement. If you're not willing to do charitable acts for free, then just don't be involved with it. But there's plenty of people that have done charity events that, have, you know, are willing to do that kind of stuff. It's one weekend, like, you know, they could have made a post looking for people willing to like help with the online thing if that was a problem. Uh, but yeah, I just... Hopefully we won't be shortchanged. Hopefully it blows it out of proportion and I'm just being negative, but I am skeptical in all things, always. Okay, if I can just talk for a moment without no. being interrupted, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you, Simeon. <laughs> uh, no, I, for the most part, I agree with everything you're going to say about it. I do want them to obviously have an online. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean it shouldn't be there. Like, They need to have an online portion. That's what's going to raise them the most money. Like, yeah, in-person stuff is fun, and I prefer that. But at the end of the day, you're going to get more people for online, for Battle Royales, for whatever. And if you just relegate them to the auction, 
that really sucks. You're really cutting out a ton of stuff for people and a lot of money for Huntington's. Like we already said, the $1 for entry to these events will also go to Huntington's is a sadly low amount for how much events typically cost around 25 to 30 bucks for event entries, you know? So like that part I'm not in love with, but I know Scott Porter himself was like, I really want it to be an in-person thing. Personally, I wish we would find a more centralized venue. And this is also my fault with Worlds. Not that Graceland was terrible or anything, but just a more centralized venue to the United States or, um, you know, just anything like that. Yeah. Having it all the way down there really, really sucks. Like, I would actually be okay if they maybe started having stuff in Colorado, uh, Oklahoma, Texas, whatever. Those, like, states in, the, like, the middle of There's, the I U.S. Mean, I could be fine with. I would love but... to see... Uh, an event that like a huge event um, in let's see Kansas City they do like Planet Comic Con yeah, and they that'd do, be awesome. um, I would love something in Kansas City there's that yeah there's that huge venue I can't remember the name of it but that venue is like the size it's actually bigger than the venue that the last Worlds was held at um, oh, wow but you could awesome. do like this huge huge event I don't know how much it would cost to rent it out. I guess that's probably the biggest barrier to entry there. Whereas yeah. that is the one nice thing about it being at Lucky Dice is um, they no probably renting, won't, tra yeah, they probably won't yeah, charge as much as anything. one of those bigger venues. I, I still assume they're going to take, you know, whatever they see is like fair well, or whatever. Yeah. Still um, business, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just, you know, turn the lights off or whatever. Um, but yeah. I, I would like to also see I see like so many major events happening in far reaches like Florida, like New York, Texas, and yeah, like having centralized stuff would really be beneficial to the the whole community. Not saying yeah. for everything, obviously like state events and smaller events and whatever, you just put them wherever. But right. uh yeah, for like big events, it'd be cool to have stuff like columbus ohio's like not too bad that's where origins Terrible. was like nationals yeah. but yeah just something where like you know the cost of travel is not a big deciding factor where traveling is something that most people most clicks players will be able to do yeah so this is obviously still in its early stages, but clearly there was plenty of behind the scenes work to even make this post. So I hope there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff we're not seeing. I hope I hope he is getting a online crew of people together and isn't just like, oh, well, the easy thing to do is just have them also be in the auction. I don't want that to happen. So hopefully, and this is, you know, fingers crossed and everything, just like how all of these events here changed from what they were originally. Uh, perhaps this event can also change. Um, I think if it's within the same month, maybe not the week before if you need the week before to get ready or the week after if you need the week after to ship stuff out, whatever. But if you can do it within the same month at least, that way maybe even the people that go, I mean, if it was the week before or the week after, you could have the people that go to this event also play online. That would be huge. And Think about how much way more revenue you can make for Huntington's, how much money you can raise. Uh, if you had it where both people could play online and in person, and then you could have people like talking about, oh, hey, I'm going to be there. Are you going to be there? Whatever. That would be really fun. That'd be awesome. But also, the fact that it's in May really, really worries me. I think, is that is that when it was last year? Was it in May, the Huntington's event? So, yeah, Thursday, May 5th begins this event. It's less than two months away. For a lot of people, that's not enough time to plan to go to an event like this. So already it's not looking like tons of people are going to be able to make it. Um, and I'm not saying that's a huge, huge detriment, but I mean like uh, Florida, I think, started saying they were going to do their event in like February or March this last year. And then it wasn't until June, which is only another month or so, maybe four months. But still, I think... Now, two months in advance is good enough. I think most people do just need a month in advance. Uh, but still, it just seems really tight. It seems like a very narrow window uh, to announce an event that we still don't have all the information on, which is really rough. So I'm going to be cautiously optimistic going into this. I want to go to it. I want to have fun. I want to play in person. I'd also love to, you know, if, you know, God willing, play in line in line online excuse me yeah get but, in line uh, yeah get in line check your hero clicks privilege get in line buddy um 
But yeah, and well, most importantly, I just want to win You Can't See Me, John Cena. Which it's it's also weird they have yeah. Ultimate Warrior, but none of the other ones from Gen Con to give away, but then they're giving away the super ancient Samurai Spider Gwen and yeah. Spider Carnage. It's, yeah. Also makes me Ryan. a little weary that like yeah, just like how uh, rising. Lady that's Phoenix really was the, the only new prizing that was added. Yeah. Um I I guess maybe they're saving like the big stuff for uh the well, obviously they have to probably wait until they get more information from WizKids. We know how WizKids can be with information, but maybe they're saving yeah. some of like the bigger um unreleased stuff for the auction. What if yeah, that's I how they release like... Wave 2? What if they're like <sighs> Like full set of wave two as one of the auction items. Large dude. <laughs> full set of wave two or sting. <sighs> and me and you'd have to pool it together. We gotta film extreme rules too. That's true. To. Just, we gotta That's where you joining the Patreon listener will will come into play. All money from the Patreon will will be henceforth now used for potentially winning all of wave two if that's at the auction. Uh, that'd be such a terrible way to announce Wave 2, unless they said within the month it'll be shipped out, and then I'll be like, okay, fine. That's okay. Sort of like how they did um that one auction for Fulcrum and uh, yeah. Ghost Rider. Then I'd be okay with it, but yikes. If it was, yeah, it was the only way to get Wave 2, I'd be like, oh, man. <sighs> the bank's gonna hate this. I'm gonna have to talk to the bankler again and get a loan. I'm excited to see the auction. If it is new and fresh, hopefully it's not like random Wonder Woman statue and ancient Galactus and cups and stuff. Not dissing Simeon's cup or anything, but uh, I do hope it's uh, really, really crazy cool. Like never before released hero click stuff, all those con exclusives that we're privy to. Uh, I, th I think just really ignoring everything it says about like the rock and all that. The fact that it probably means, I mean, the fact that it says uh, we're getting nationals and worlds this year. That's awesome. And that basically everyone who wants to go can go. I mean, 25 points, yeah. 50 points. Even if you don't have any points, just go to Worlds. Like, I went to Worlds the last year they had it, which is sad uh, to think 2019 was the last time they had it. But uh, I went, wasn't qualified for Worlds. I was like, eh, I'll do one qualifying thing. Didn't get qualified. Sure, it doesn't matter. I played in all the awesome side events they had. I. Uh, not all of them, but I played most of the awesome side events. I played a ton of Battle Royales, and it was a crazy fun, good time. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. World's awesome. The Huntington's event was in May, so that's, yeah. It, it was, was in on, May. on track is to be like, the same. Which, is that like Awareness Month or something, I guess? Uh, that I can't be what remember. It is? I also really hope it being in person, we have some live streams. So, just to keep the, the like online community somehow interested and donating i know like when we did our live stream uh we raised quite a like we raised a, almost a hundred dollars an hour and we were just doing oh, two awesome. dudes talking yeah. like yeah. over a hundred dollars an hour and yeah um that's talking, that was just like us physical, talking and worker. yeah getting Pain. progressively more and more sleep deprived i think it would be easy to set up a booth with commentators and live streaming I think that's easy enough. Like I can do it and I'm not an AV person. I'm not like a, a tech wizard yeah. by any means. Um, if, the, if it's not able to like happen or you don't think it's like possible, just reach out and find somebody that's willing to do it. Because I would like, if I showed up to the event, I'd be willing to like forego playing to do that just so that the online community has something to like pay attention to donate whatever uh i don't know if they're doing like charity probs or whatever but like regardless if i'm watching and like you know the commentator's like oh and don't remember like you know there don't forget there's like this link to donate who knows that's that's at least going to get some people to donate whereas no commentators and no uh live streams is not going to help the like the case at all so yeah no, it's not we'll see i'll remain optimistic cautiously optimistic obviously not like super thrilled with the maps being back but i guess they never really left so but yeah that's about it i don't know we've talked about almost 40 minutes about no. this oh, and geez, I, God. <laughs> yeah i i don't want to so i don't want anyone to come away from this thinking that i am against this at all i'm just very 
uh yeah like i said cautiously optimistic and uh the caution sometimes weighs heavier than the optimism yep basically what we're going to talk about guys is something very near and dear to Simeon and i's hearts and that is mission points that's right we're going to cover a mission point thread here in this week's Red Dead Redemption. Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points, neither. But see, and I do just fine. Say you there, Simeon. Do you like mission points? <laughs> I like that. I sure could use some alternative win conditions in this game. Um, what? I tell you what. Are you still using charcoal and standard attacks to win to win your Heroclux games? Oh, you need clean, burning mission points. That's what you need, boy. I sell mission points, and coming soon to Disney Plus, I tell you what, uh, mission point accessories. That's right, boy. Uh, is that is that uh, Hank Trill about to drop uh, a hot new album? <laughs> Hank Trill. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, uh, I need to my coworkers to have again. been listening to it for a pretty couple funny. weeks. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Burning. Oh, it's uh, before we get into the thread, the side of the river. I'll I'll just be straight up. I love mission points. I think any kind of alternative win condition, anything that makes the game change and more exciting and adapt and like evolve in different ways, even if it's not yeah. great. Like ID cards at the end, I thought they were not great, but I think it was an important like part of Hero Clicks to like go through that stage so Wiz Kids understood why that kind of stuff shouldn't possibly be done at like such little cost kind of thing. Um, Now they still do that kind of thing with other characters. There's still characters that can pop in for like a turn and then pop off the map and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing just in that aspect. And then I think any game that has alternative ways to play is great. That's like, yeah. That's why, like, games like Civ Six have, like, so much... I mean, all the Civilization, like, series, they have so much replayability because you can go after different kind of win conditions. Um, like, CSGO has different maps. and Or different, of course, it's got different maps. It's oh. got different... I mean, yeah, like, every first-person shooter, right? Like, arm yeah. the bomb, capture the flag, all that stuff, where it's like, yeah. sure, we're shooting at each other. It's not all team deathmatch all the time. No, and, like, it would be boring yeah. if it was. Like, if I just... I mean... Some people probably enjoy just like free for all or whatever, but like, yeah, um, like playing Call of Duty and then switching to like uh, the zombie mode, like, you know, going from, you know, having a mission objective to just like playing against other players. It's always good in games. Uh, there's even, you know, RPGs and stuff. You can play an entire like D&D campaign without ever having a like encounter where you have to like fight. And that's fun. Like it's not always fun for everyone. Some people really crave that like action and battle and whatever. But as far as like role playing go, like games go, it's always like a good option to have. Dude, I I love it. If I if I can get through an like one in, I used to be when I played D&D, I used to be like, "Ah, oh, we didn't even fight this session." Well, like what was the purpose? There wasn't even an encounter. And now I'm like all we talked, all we did was talk, and that was freaking awesome. Funny, it was a good time. Like, progressed the story in a way more meaningful way than rolling, like, combat dice for an hour and a half. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I like mission points. Uh, I like alternate win conditions. Heck, uh, even before mission points were a thing, I was like, one time I was kicking around trying to win without attacking my opponent. I'll get into. I'll maybe t- talk about this team. It didn't really work. It didn't make any sense. But like, I've I've even before mission points were a thing. I've tried to figure out ways to like win the game without like doing anything like with my opponent at all. So I'm hundred percent all there. I mean, Simi and I are both pro mission point camp all the way. But uh, yeah, we got a thread on HC Realms here. <laughs> Simeon, you you picked it. So you know it's always going to be good when we got an HC Realms <laughs> thread. Yeah, um, so, the majority of the threads, I guess, we choose, but still. Up up front, we are definitely mission point good camp, and that's going to skew a lot of like my opinions of what people are saying. Um, I just find it I find it really strange that a lot of the arguments uh, against mission points are like this is a game primarily meant for like just punch, and I'm like, while I do enjoy especially casually, I do enjoy just throwing figures out there. If this was just a game for, like, 
you know, lack of strategy, just like punch the other team, it wouldn't be that great. Like this is not a game about just punch the other team. There's a lot of like techniques and tactics and whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of like tech out there that involves other stuff than just punching the other team. You've got alpha strikes, you've got like barrier tech, you've got like um, teams that just have really high defense. You've got things that, you know, are different than that. I mean, Galactus is technically not an alternate win condition, but it definitely, uh, we'll just get into it. So, uh, Ignat's Mouse, the, the name of the thread is Mission Points, Yay or Nay. And they go on to say, from the errata thread, open-ended question. Do you like mission points? Have you tried using them? Have you seen a game won with them or otherwise have an impact? Uh, we both already said I, that we do like mission points. Calder has used them, obviously, and won with them in a tournament. So um, I have used them. I have not won anything with them, um, but I, I don't play like competitive mission point teams when I play casually and I haven't played in a tournament in a while. So I haven't actually tried to use them in a tournament. I have been trying, I've been practicing with the wrecker and I think I'm actually going to switch off to a slightly different build that I've been thinking about, but yeah, so that's our answers. I'm answering for you Calder. So you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but I want to read the first response by Tidge and I don't want to be too mean but I do think that this person might not have the closest um, and I, I don't the most updated, the most like intricate knowledge of how hero clicks tournaments and everything else is going like currently. So Tidge says mission point victory conditions should be treated like event dials were treated. If your opponent agrees to their use, they are legit for the game. So that being said, like assuming following that logic if your opponent didn't agree to their use then they wouldn't be legitimate for the game and this is probably like the worst hot take on this thread which is saying a lot because there should not be anything that my character can do that my opponent can just be like i don't agree to that so no that's just bad like that's just it should make sense why that's not a good idea like if my if i just disagree like i'm just like no i don't like penetrating damage no one on my team has it so your team can't use it like if it's built into a character a costed build character like you know hell is 125 points part of that like point cost goes to her having the potential for mission points if that's built in yeah. then that character should be able to access that regardless of what your opponent wants. Um, then the, the argument about it being treated like event dials and like battlefield conditions, that kind of stuff. The reason it's not treated like that is because it comes with like a cost and it's part of a character. It's not just like an additional element. Uh, you know, if I don't want my opponent to use like their equipment because I didn't bring in equipment, I don't get to say that. Like they, they paid points to use those. I had the option to do that. Uh, it's just, it's just a bad hot take. And, uh, they go on to say, um, by the way, I hated that ruling for event dials and the adjacent rulings for around like battlefield conditions. It's just that mission points seem to be very much like those early experiments. I've already stated why I think that's completely false. Like, they're not even close to those other things. Yeah. They're not close to no. battlefield conditions or event dials. Um, these are traits on characters that have point costs. Uh, if you kill the character, the mission point victory pretty much goes out the window unless they've got multiples. But, yeah. Um, that's the first one that I wanted to go with. Did you have anything on page one that of this thread that you wanted to um yeah so page one uh, i'm gonna go with raven project and what they have to say here so he says the all or nothing nature of mission points seems to be what's holding them back if i score 19 mission points it doesn't matter but if i score 20 i win and that's awkward i prefer to see mission points translate into victory points maybe not 15 points per that would be ridiculous but maybe five i um I, I agree with Raven Project. It really sucks. It's really to the detriment of a mission point team um, that, like, 
like right now there's there kind of seems to be no real threats when, when i get to 19 mission points yeah my opponent's like a little scared if i if i can 100 percent like get them the next turn but if not then once the time is called the time is called and if they scored any more points than i did then they just win right so i i do feel like there needs to be some kind of each mission point needs to be worth more than that because right now if i'm halfway to my mission point victory that means nothing for my opponent um it, it really means nothing and it really sucks so i would like to see them like i'm in agreement with this dude that i would like to see five or ten points each for a mission point uh thing just so that way you know yeah. i don't get totally like screwed over on this was... trying to focus mission points so, this yeah. was something we kind of talked about when yeah, mission we points were first we um, introduced. And I, I had suggested at the time that it would make sense if um, after like the game, after determining winner, points were calculated with 15 per mission point. So you couldn't win on points because of mission points, but you would still get points as right. far as like tournaments concerned. But yeah, yeah. this does bring up another problem where uh, like if your opponent scores like 50 points on you and you go for mission points and it just comes to time and you're like that close that your yeah. opponent still wins. Like they could just, they could just bury her up, like score 50 points, bury her up and you're going for mission points, trying to like push them to engage and they just manage to take it to time. And yeah. So I do think, I don't know, it would get really convoluted if there were uh, victory points after the fact and also victory points like during the game. But yeah, yeah I, I don't know what would be because five that only I mean, that'd give you 50 if you hit 10. And that's not nothing. Assuming you're also engaging. Also, I, I would think taking out figures. You probably um, want to do at least 10 per like maybe not 15 where you win. If you once you get 20 10 doesn't means, seem too bad because, yeah, if you're if you're at 19, at that feel like if I'm at 19 mission points. Yeah. I feel like that's worth 190 points. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And yeah. For the people that will be like, oh, you don't have to engage with your opponent. You still have to play very close because... Oh, yeah. Like, there is... I mean, with the exclusion of pre Hella, there's mm. no mission point that where, like, you don't have to be engaged with your opponent. Uh, you know, Wrecker, you can bury her up, but you have to be closer yeah. to their starting area. So I, you have to be yeah. across the map. Same with uh, Susan, Queen of Atlantis. Um, Herbie has to like you with Herbie. You have to have There's one of your characters KO'd or almost KO'd. Yeah, Uatu has to reroll attacks. Like there's a lot of stuff. Like you actually have to be engaged for this stuff to kick off. I think that's the problem that people look at is they see the most popular mission point ones, which I guess they assume like Wrecker, Ares, uh, stuff like that. Maybe Sue, Queen of Atlantis. Um, and they're like, oh well, for this. You don't even have to interact with me like you don't have to attack me or anything you can just kill your own figures or you can just you know bear your up and like sure that's true but the majority of all like mission point characters have to do with like attacking opposing characters or doing yeah. something i will say know? i mean uh i guess ultron or pym ultron pym yeah ultron prime ultron pym whatever that would be the one where you don't but even right, then, you have to they attack, put. But you have to be in your opponent's starting area. Yeah, they put know? three of those markers of in their starting area, and then they put three on the rest of the board. So you yeah. have to cross the map to like, not just yeah. cross the map. You have to go to where they are, like turn one. I mean, you don't have to get there turn one, but you have to eventually get there. They can just camp in their starting area and deny you mission points. Um, yeah, and then uh, what is the the Ultron, the non prime, just the regular Ultron? He gets one for every character with the name Ultron in their name in your opponent's starting area. So again, yeah. you have to. I mean, then Golden Age. I guess I could like morphing jar it or something. But other than Maybe. that, like assuming I don't do that, you have to cross the map probably with your figure. That's so. Yeah, it's it's not an easy task, and it's definitely not something where you just get to ignore your opponent and just you know you don't like remove all your figures from the game. And like pull out your phone and just start like mining Bitcoin or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, like mission points yeah. are like it's not an easy win. Like obviously, if it was, we would have seen it happen a lot more by now. 
And we have seen like several. It's definitely possible. It's just you also have to be ready to actually fight your opponent and win by victory points at the same time. Oh, which yeah. Which is a hard balance to, to well, keep. Well, that's what I found when when my idea with Ares gotten messed up um, that same day at that event. I'm not going to get into that story. But um, what I just ended up having to do was just play aggressively. You know? Like, okay, as long as that dude is bringing out his German soldiers or whatever... I'm KOing mine at the same time. I can, you know, use Venom to kill them both. I can, you know, run up with Ares and keep everybody, you know, relatively protected. But I wasn't sitting in the back the whole time. You know, like, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Keep going. But like, yeah, Christian Point victories in like an official event. Yeah. They can so <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a two minute, too much on this uh, thread. There's a lot of hot takes. There's a lot of, honestly, there's a lot of um, people that, are fans of it um yeah on page it's two good. here ugavin you you Ugavine, Ugavine, i don't know whatever Ugavine. uh says not a fan of one-sided alternate winning conditions if one side brings a mission point figure then that rule should apply for all players i have no idea what this could mean yeah like what if i don't know if this was in response to that the one i read on the first page about um, your opponent just being able to say they're not legit for the game. I don't know. I don't know if it's a reply to that, and I'm just reading it wrong. Because the other way to take it is, if I bring a mission point team, then my other like my opponent just gets to like have mission points. What? Like I don't know how that would work. Like I would just be like, oh yeah, I'm running uh, the like sinister syndicate. Um, Every time I copy my attack value, I get a mission point. Like I just, I just get to make up a mission point on the spot because my opponent's playing it. Like that makes, I don't know. None of this makes sense. None of that makes any sense. I'm sorry. That's just a. You should not have typed that. Whatever yeah. you're talking about. I dude had a stroke halfway. Yeah, through and time. the other part of it, not a fan of one-sided alternate winning conditions. Then, like, are you a fan of like one-sided different? like tactics so like if my opponent brings a bunch of barrier or a bunch of outwit and i didn't bring any on my team then i'm just like ah i give three of my guys outwit since you have so much like oh i don't have theme team props but now i do because your team has it like are you just not a fan of like any inequality in teams because there's always going to be some if my opponent like plans on barriering the whole game and my team doesn't then i'm going to be at like a disadvantage in that respect almost so, like you know um yeah if we go to sorry page three really quick this this person does respond um to sort of clarify their point a little bit um so it was by hester who's like what do you mean the rule like are you saying it should apply for all players like if a player gets to 20 that player wins are you suggesting that each player should have action access to the mission points if they didn't bring any uh and then he said yeah that's what i mean if one player brings a mission points character, then all players can use the ability. Although I'm not sure how that would work with current wording of the power. I feel it's unbalanced that only one <laughs> side gets multiple win <laughs> options. Oh, you've got Wrecker? Uh, all my characters get to bring in the Wrecking Crew. <laughs> like, what? My Batman <laughs> family now brings in the Wrecking Crew who destroy blocking and get mission points. <laughs> so that is what they meant. Yeah, that's what they meant. I was giving them a yeah. little bit of benefit of doubt, but yeah, that no. is possibly I you know, I said the first one that I read was probably the worst hot take on this thread, but this might be the actual yeah, it's bad. I, I don't want to use mean language because I'm like, you know, some people just play differently. But gosh, that is so bad. That is like if you apply that to any other aspect, oh, you brought the exo specs? I didn't. Every character on my team gets to use them too then. Like, as soon as you equip them, I'm going to yeah. pick a character that can also have that effect. Like, no. I paid points for this ability. It's not like mission points are just a, you know, Free. a thing that you attach to any character. It's costed into that character. Like, you have yeah. to play the character that it works with. You can't just, yeah. Um, and you, like, you get, you know, if you play Hela... You're paying 125 points. She's got other stuff that goes along with that. But part of it, her like cost is the mission points. And if I lose her, I no longer have that. 
how does it make sense that like my hella dies but your dark side is still making grave markers <laughs> yeah uh, like it's what? just yeah no nah. it's dark side it's very making weird grave markers oh. uh i'll go with with yet another uh comment that i just really did not care for pushes up glasses it's cute i guess the problem with alternate win conditions in general is if they're even halfway competitively viable, the game can rapidly degenerate. Like, Imagine Worlds is full of pre errata hella teams racing to off themselves the fastest, or wrecking crew teams largely ignoring each other and punching walls. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Sounds like, awesome. Yeah. You're telling me it's like you, than, you get you into a I mirror match going. with another uh, mission point team and you both just try and outdo each other? First of all, if it's literally a mirror match of Wrecking Crew or Hella, like pre errata Hella, uh, the the pre errata Hella team, unless you're just banking on them rolling really bad or whatever, assuming that it's this is like the cannonball, whatever, it literally just you roll off and whoever wins the roll off wins, which is something that happens at Worlds. It happens in like the top finals of Worlds enough that it's like kind of sad, but that's something that happens. Rolling off to see who wins is definitely a thing. Um, and then the Wrecking Crew one, it wouldn't be them largely ignoring each other because it would be, they both have to be on opposing starting areas. So it would be whichever one gets to the opposing starting area, the other one's probably going to move in and try and deal some damage. I mean, that would so be yeah. my guess. It's not like That's I'm going to let you come where... get, you know, two mission points and then I'm going to go to your starting area, get two mission points and then you're going to get like three and then I'm going to get three. Like we're not going to do that because obviously I'm going to be behind as second player. So I'm going to have to engage and take out some of your bystanders or something like your molecule man, whatever, whatever the build is, I'm going to have to do something. Uh, so it would never be just two teams ignoring each other. But even if it was like, how is this different than, like two teams that like you know one can't engage because the other just has a clear advantage how is this different than um like two vulture teams facing off and it just coming down to a roll off you know this is just hero clicks like that's just that's just the game i don't know i yeah i think them being even halfway competitively viable the game can rapidly degenerate i don't see it getting like, uh, and this is, again, I like mission points. I like alternate win conditions. I like the fact that my opponent could build a, like, lockdown team, and I could build a mission point team, and while they're trying to, like, lock me down, I'm trying to get mission points. Or while they're trying to, like, barrier, and they, you know, they yeah. KO something worth, like, 25 points, and then decide to barrier the rest of the game, which is also a tactic that I've seen used at worlds is like a scoring lot. a tiny amount of points and then barriering and trying not to let your opponent get to you. And sometimes it works. Like, let's not yeah. forget in 2018, 2019, it was possible to win with a three point ID card. And like, that was right. the only thing you did that game. It was possible yeah. to KO exo specs and then just barrier up for the rest of the game. Oh, that was like, you want to talk was, about rapidly that a, degenerate. If that was a Nats win or a Rock win or whatever, but like someone like literally destroyed like a 10 point object. Yeah. And then they just sat in their starting area the rest of the game. Yeah. There was games you know? where was like, like opponents didn't want to engage to give like the, they didn't want to give the other person like a big advantage to get points on them. So they, they didn't want to engage. And then at like towards the end, someone would call in like a Cyclops to try and make like a Hail Mary just to win and the Cyclops would miss or wouldn't KO them or whatever. And then the opponent won by three points. I'm like, that is definitely a thing that happened. If you're telling me that this is as bad as that, I do not agree. Because mission points require me to actively do things every turn. I cannot just, with the exception of like Ares, I guess, where I could, if I had some mission points with Ares, because his is cumulative, it like gets at the every beginning of every turn True, yeah that's nice i guess really nice. i could get like four and then just be like past turn past turn but then like i'm still i should probably still have to like run away or do something something yeah i can't just sit there and barrier i mean i well i could in that at in I mean, that specific 
one I could, but even then, like I'm, I'm actively doing something the whole time. I'm not just, you know, sitting there waiting for my opponent to make a mistake. Like some yeah. games go. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to rank these. Um, I think dapper apples is third. Uga Vine has got to be number one for worst hot take. Just if one side brings, I don't know if one side brings mission points figures, then that rule should apply for all players. Is that worse than your opponent just being able to say, no, I don't want you to be able to do that. Cause I think your opponent just being like, eh, I don't like power cosmic. I don't like willpower rules. We're not going to play with those rules. <laughs> like, if I build right. my team for a specific thing, then yeah, I don't Your know. Entire These team are... has power cosmic. Uh, this... I think I should have access to that. I'm like, no, no, I paid for this. This is my team. What what makes you think you deserve access to that? You this whole thread brain? reads like a nursing home was taught how to play hero clicks. Oh, it's so bad. And dude. then they also were oh, on here. realms. We gotta we gotta read. This is one of my favorites from. Uh, Two, two great ways to like end this thread on on the third page here. Old Super Clixer, remember since January 2010. So I got to respect my elder series. He got me beat by a whole three years. Um, he says, "Nah, not good to try to change the way to win a game. Let people create their own fantasy battles." What? Like, bro, what the hell are you talking about, man? Not good to try to change the way to win a game. But there's Alpha Strike. I mean, there's don't die tech. There's been different ways to win the game the entire time. The game has been stale. I mean, for lack of a better term, is it not stale? Just like, oh, yeah. if I score points and I win. Like, that's stale. What do you mean yeah. it's not good to, try to change the way to win a game? It's absolutely good to try to change the way to win a game. It's boring. Yeah. I mean, that is, that, why, that is why we have, like, at casual venues, um, like any venue that doesn't play only modern 300 we have alternate builds to change right. like you know how you know give restrictions to change the way that we build teams and yeah at the end of the day we're just building to like essentially ko like the opponent but like that's why we do different builds that's why like battle royal battle royal has an alternate win condition you're not trying to ko all the opponents you're trying to get the most points which definitely changes the tactics that you take you don't go all in on like a high point character. You wait until some other people have damaged them and then you try and like take them out in one turn cuz otherwise somebody gets those points. Like Hero Clicks has always had alternate wins. It's just always been by KOing. And so this is just an alternate win that doesn't require KOing necessarily. It still does in some aspects. But yeah, it's yeah. I'm going to I'm going to read the last one that I'm going to go with. Uh this is okay. From Tyroclix responding to Ugavines, that's what I meant, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's what I meant. Both sides should get access somehow. I don't I don't have any specifics. I just think people should be able to take things from other figures that they didn't build with. Uh, so Tyroclix says, Heroclix has always been unbalanced. This is why it is a garbage game in any competitive format. It is a great game casually, though. That is the best sentence. <laughs> this is why it is a garbage game in any competitive format. Uh, it's definitely not cultured to be a competitive game. That's for sure. Not in my opinion, but I'm wrong on things sometimes. Uh, so they continue. Mission points are no different than Colossal Retaliators, Team Bases, Sideline Active Characters, ID Cards, Trouble Alerts, Would Be KO'd, which is like... Uh, don't die tech zero point map bonuses swapping teams giving out keyword abuse and zero cost extra figures brought into the game from the ether which would be like uh troublemakers and stuff like that trouble alerts oh, sure uh i like the idea but don't hold much hope for whiz kids to not totally screw it up hella already shows the wall starting to crumble I used a cosmic team with Gamora and Uatu in a tournament. Best I did as 14 points before wiping the opponent. My other games were like 6 and 8, I think. So this is, again, building a competitive, or I'm assuming competitive, uh, mission point team, or a team with mission point capability, but then still just beating your opponent the classical way. That's essentially what most mission point teams are. Um, they continue, I played a game against an Ares-led team. He might have gotten a 12 and then lost. 
My son used an Ultron team at home, came down to one action. If my Wolverine misses Ultron, he gets his 20th point. If he hits, Ultron is KO'd. It was pretty exciting. One thing I think should be added to delay WizKids from turning mission points into the next team base would be to make mission point teams require a unified keyword. As they make more pieces, combining the right three to five on a team could make some short games. That being said, I also like Raven Project's idea of making mission points into victory points somehow. It does fit the current state of the game better and make it so you don't have to commit to an all or nothing team build. So I think this is a good one to end, like at least my opinions on. Um, I don't think mission points are this, like he says, they're no different than Colossal Retaliators team bases. I don't think that's true. I think a lot of those things are quite a bit different than mission points. Um, now, mission points are very similar to certain things as far as competitive builds go, like Colossal Retaliators, team bases, things where if they get broken, they'll be required by all teams or like whatever, however you want to put it. Uh, but at this point, mission points are hardly necessary to win. Uh, they're actually kind of detrimental to like your build if you, uh, I shouldn't say detrimental, but they're kind of a secondary condition that you can win with they're definitely not something that is required if you want to be able to win in a tournament yeah uh, definitely um i guess what i'm gonna end off with is the last comment because it it's funny to me uh dapper apples who's been a recurring character in this thread says imagine wrecking crew of all characters to be highly sought after twice hey buddy I like the Wrecking Crew. I think they're great <laughs> villains. Thank you very much. I just think they're neat. I, yeah, I just think they're neat. I mean, I liked them back in the Mighty Thor. Loved yeah. playing them. I liked them back in... Uh, last time we got them before that. I liked the few we got in Iron Man. I guess it was just uh, Absorbing Man. But, you know, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that we had him. No, I, but it's a crew it of... Was- Four plus, rude. I mean, sometimes Wrecker, absorbing, or yeah, sometimes, sometimes not Wrecker, absorbing, uh, man, sometimes yeah. absorbing Man. Um, I like to combine like, them with like Baron Zemo and stuff like that. But yeah, but yeah it's Mr. a Mr. solid Apple. little team. Mr. It's like Apples. imagine like, people liking the Frightful Four. Imagine people liking the Sinister Six. Like it's a cool, uh, like, yeah, like bad fun. guy team. Yeah, I, I mean, um, cool is an operative word. I don't know, not the coolest. They don't rating. look very cool but no. check no. out my uh bulldozer cosplay for reference all right how would we you know rating this thread i think we rate it um through how easy it is to get mission points with the mission point characters that exist okay like how are how are we how do we want to rate this so thread, we're gonna say you know? like I mean, like herbie is like a one I think yeah, that's like probably one of the hardest that, ones to use. Um, uh, Hades is the one, maybe. Oh, <laughs> maybe yeah, Hades, Hades is up the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty bad. And then, obviously, um, Malekith is the most broken, so he'll be in the, the 10. Uh, clearly, clearly yeah. a 10 on Malekith. We'll there. say yeah, pre errata Hela, I don't know. Um, I still, uh, yeah, I still pre- don't think pre errata Hela had a chance. I think Wrecker had a better chance than pre errata Hela. And that's just... Yeah. Maybe I'm completely off base, but I I don't know. We'll never yeah, know right. unless somebody I, I brave enough to run a tournament. Regardless, regardless of uh, whatever happened in any tournaments recently, I think anyone with eyes and a brain could see that Wrecker was good from the start. Yeah, There's no person that could ever win a tournament that would then all of a sudden make people think Wrecker is good. Wrecker was clearly good. Even just dropping off Pogs, he was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, like yeah, I, mission points aside, he's a very him. solid 75 points. Really good, yeah. Really good 75 points. Um, I'm going to rate the thread uh, with Gamora. Uh, Rare Prime Gamora. Because if there's one thing happening in this thread, there's definitely people thinking they're outwitting people. And definitely people outwitting people. So I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to give it to her. I think this thread is split between people that have had good experiences and actually played it and um, actually understand this game uh, and then also filled with people that haven't played since things like arch enemies and battlefield conditions were the norm and have yeah. zero clue what like modern hero clicks is like because all the people that seem to have played with ID cards and like whatever like more modern kind of tech 
like mission points and all the people that are against it i don't even know if they've opened a rule book ever like i don't know (laughs) some of the hot takes we've seen it's like what do you play do you just play kitchen like it's fine if you just play kitchen table but don't come in and be like mission points bad here at my kitchen table we don't allow them we've banned wwe hero clicks from my kitchen table like that's fine Yeah. Just don't make a big deal about it because your kitchen table is three people. Like, I don't know, whatever. Uh, I'll say this thread's a Susan Queen of Atlantis. Worth looking at, but hardly worth delving into. Okay. That's fair. Which we just did. So. We did a lot of, yeah. <laughs> we did delve into it. Uh, yeah. No, I do think this thread had some decent points. Um, four mission points. Uh, I think it had some real head scratchers as to why not to play mission points or how to fix them and by head scratchers i mean like i feel like i had a stroke trying to process some of this information Uh, i don't yeah i don't understand like even now like this is the third time i've read through this stuff and even now i have no idea what some of these people are trying to say especially okay I'll, i'll finish on this one i have no idea what this p p jibbling Oh, uh, don't. Um, I was trying to get through the whole time without even uh, talking about him. Come on, man. In reply to everyone bashing how they suck, I'd much rather they started off pretty bad and gradually got better than have them start off completely busted and try to get them tuned down. This is exactly how new mechanics should be rolled out. What a terrible, terrible take by whoever that is. Yeah, terrible opinion. Sounds yeah. Like a angry, short little man. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, terrible takes. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I'm done with that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to listener ale. There are dozens of us. Dozens. I don't know why I said it like that. It was weird. Um. All right. So, Malcolm has a challenge question, uh, and a challenge it is because it's way too much work. Uh, from each major set, uh, any more than fifty figures in that set. You can't pick from Fast Forces or the Starter, even if it's under the tab of that set. So, whatever. Okay, fine. What is one and only one must have and one must avoid hero clicks in each major set? Oh, I did the first part, not the second part. Oh no, I I said skip the second part because okay. that's insane, Malcolm. One, that's insane. Yeah. Um, like coming from two guys who have at least played every single set in the game, <laughs> that's insane. You want us yeah. to go through every single set? Well, number one, I'm going to tell you this. We're not going to answer this entire question this week. We're going to answer just all the Golden Age ones that don't have cards. Yeah, all we right? had to split this. Even that was 19 full sets that we had to look yeah, to. Um, it's a lot of work. Must it's Avoid insane. is most of the experienced REV stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, just literally, like, for all these Golden Age sets, anything that doesn't stand out as, like, a fun character, just avoid yeah. it. Like, there's no reason to pick up. 99 percent of hero clicks just get what you want like that i mean that's there's there's nothing that's like so detrimental to your team that it would like ruin your day uh so that yeah no don't you dare go there (laughs) why what's that papa that dark area we do not own i collected i collected the experienced puppet master from infinity challenge and the next day all of my hero clicks came to life and attacked me yeah, Must there's, avoid. There's no, there's no, no. avoid. <laughs> there's, yeah. Oh, um, I, so I randomly clicked on, what is this, 33? Infinity Challenge. This would be the Veteran Electra. For whatever reason, I clicked on Veteran Electra. It has one comment from Ichabod Danger. Okay. I hate old figs now. <laughs> this comment That's made it? in 2007. I have no idea what that's in reference to. I hate old figures. <laughs> okay. Shows up. That's fun. He was hot take. He yeah, leaves. I kind of want to. I'm gonna elaborate. look through uh, good old Ichabod Danger's uh, comments. Uh, Just like see. All right. When they started hating old figs back in 2007. Oh, all right. Man. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. I'll go first. We'll just go back and forth. Uh, I'm not gonna elaborate at all on these picks. We have. Uh, 19 to 48 get through. characters you know to get through yeah. uh, that was 39 38 gosh math is hard 38 characters to get through uh i chose from affinity challenge 
uh, veteran Captain America, set number 69, 62-point Captain America. Yeah. I went with um, number 142, Unique Nightmare. Uh, next one, Hyper Time, I went with set number 69, Steel. I went with 128, Flash. In, what is this, Clobbering Time, I went with set number 69, Logan. All right, I went with 084, She-Hulk. Cosmic Justice, I did set number 89, uh, Lex Luthor, 69 points. Cosmic Justice, I forgot to uh, save mine, but I'm pretty oh. sure I went with Amazo, yeah. Hypersonic yep. with RCE 11 for, f- well, it'd be 12 for 4 at range, yep. Uh, for the indie set, I mean, it was either going to be Hellboy or Judge Dredd. I went with set number 69, oh. Hellboy. We, we skipped Explosion, that's why I was off. I did have Amazo. Um, rookie Destiny pretty pretty simple yeah uh explosion i'll go with the uh rare set number 69 silver samurai uh let's see indie set um who did you say uh, i said uh 069 hellboy at 104 points okay. i went with 084 rasputin that's the one that i played Ooh, so i figured you would yeah i really like the bprd team ability uh, or wait okay. no not that one that's just wild card i can't remember which team ability it was from the indie set i really liked uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, for cause or sorry, uh, critical mass. I went with zero seventy seven Umar at sixty nine points. I went with two hundred twenty five Galactus. <laughs> yeah, the big old colossal guy. In ultimates, I went with set number zero sixty nine Sabretooth Charge Blade seventy six points. All right, I went with any of the REV Ghost Riders because it's just a cool sculpt to have. Nice, nice. Uh, we're skipping universe, right? Oh, yeah, so that's it, ultimates. Uh, yeah, so Mutant Mayhem. Uh, Mutant Mayhem, I went with 051 Dagger, 69 points. I went with 096 Loki. Uh, in Legacy, I went with uh, 069 Persuader at 129 points. I went with, and this was another one I played in Thursday Throwdown, 088 Ares. Fantastic Forces, I did 069 Submariner at 150 points. Mar- Mariner, excuse me, whatever. Mariner. Uh, I went with the one that got a legacy card, which is, well, yeah, from this set, 095 Doctor Doom. In, what is this one, Icons? Yeah, in Icons, I went with 029 Raven at, sadly, 68 points. I went with 051 Lex Luthor. Ooh, good pick. Uh, In Armor Wars, I went with 069 War Machine at 124 points. I went with another figure that I cosplayed and played, uh, 096 Magneto, 10 range, 12 attack, 5 damage. I love this sculpt, so it made it really easy to choose. Uh, in collateral damage, I went with 056 Clayface at 69 points. Ooh, I also love this sculpt. 088 Ambush Bug. Ooh. In Sinister? Yeah, in Sinister, I went with 204 Brunhilda at 69 points. All right, I didn't really have any pick for this set, but I went with 081 Bullseye because 10 range, 11 for 3. Yeah. In Supernova, I did 070 Doctor Spectrum at 69 points. I did 095 Graviton. Uh, and at the end here, at Origin, I went back to my second pick, and I saw they had a steal, so I did set number 69 steal at 164 points. All right, and I went with 088 Mr. Mind. Little bug in a jar. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And that is, that is all... That is all the Golden Age uh, sets with no cards. So next week, we'll continue on this trek <laughs> with the Avengers set and go until Oreo bases, I think. And then we'll do Oreo until new card design. Uh, how we did Thursday Throwdown, I guess. We use ages. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead. Let's do some Discord questions that we have before we jump into our email questions. So Luke, Luke, Luke says to also bring some of your beloved hero clicks back into action with legacy cards featuring iconic x-men figures x of swords it's going to have legacy cards what sword holding x exites exites uh, do you want to see ripped out of the grave and thrusted back into the waking hellscape that is modern life or uh modern legal uh so i don't know man um there was a really early uh wolverine of death right he's got like a sword uh, yeah, cool. the one with the cool, like, scarf and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's, like, got the flowing scarf. He's kind of got this bluish costume and everything. And then, of course, I mean, a Nightcrawler with a 
a rapier or a saber, either one of those is what I would definitely want for uh, legacy cards. That would be awesome. My sword X Men. Those are the only two I can think of, anyways. Uh, any legacy sword related X Men choices for um, whatever it's called? X of Swords, Simeon? X of Swads. Swads. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's plenty of like cool Wolverine and like Deadpool sculpts with swords. True. Um, man, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know obviously like Wolverine plays a decent role in like the storyline, so he's probably a shoe in. Also, they just can't get enough of reprinting stuff for him or remaking yeah. him. Um, specifically love... ones with swords. Uh, I know he won't be in it. I doubt he'll be in it at least. But Corvus from uh, oh, sure. Wolverine and the X-Men, where he's like, first time he'd roll blades, it's automatically a five, and then a four, and then three, two, and then five again. Ooh. That was a really fun figure. Um, I guess like any any of the magics, if you want to reprint a magic card and make her worth playing, that'd be cool. <laughs> she has yeah, any of sometimes. them worth playing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, nice. Next up, Mr. Halverson asks, how many clicks of damage did you take this week? Uh, and for some reason, my name is in lowercase Calder, and then in all uppercase, Simeon. So how many clicks <laughs> of damage did you take this week, Simeon? So I almost answered this last week, and I actually knew the answer last week. Uh, but okay. But this week, let's see. So I only played two games. Um trying to calculate i lost so assassin's guild is has two clicks so technically you deal one and then a ko so that'd be two he died right. both games uh the hulk from earth x is eight clicks long nine clicks long i think it's eight sounds right okay so he died one game and then almost died another game so i'll say 10 14 what else died chun li died once oh no, not a ton of damage she's actually surprisingly long dial for she has 90 okay. points so it makes sense but uh so i probably yeah i'm just gonna throw out uh 40 clicks of damage but we okay. were playing 400 points so yeah that's about 40 clicks of damage sounds about right i played uh a few 300 point games i i don't know i'm gonna say 39 <laughs> clicks of damage just to take one lesson because i only play <laughs> i only played two games this week so i uh, i did too i, I only played I two games as well, yeah. oh really oh yeah. shoot okay yeah I don't, were you yeah, doing I don't 400 remember. points though no i was 300 uh, so i would say it probably would be a little less maybe only 30 i guess but yeah i don't i couldn't do the math i was it was both record teams though um, okay one of the first games I played, they totally wiped out. I was trying a new build with DJ Doom. Um, and they totally wiped out all Caps Doom in one game. And I realized I actually equipped the time platform, so that shouldn't have been, but whatever. And yeah, so I don't know. There's probably, I don't know, 30 or so. I did play two games, and both my teams got messed up pretty badly. But um, yeah. Let's go with Bill. We have legacy cards for figures, but what if WizKids introduced them for old equipment and resources? What would you like to see get an update? And what would that be? Bill, we kind of answered this yeah. question he, last week. To be week. fair, I, he asked I, this, I, I think, like before during we released the episode. Or before we released the episode? Yeah, so we kind of answered your question. Yeah, it would have um, been, the, I guess, the day after or something. But yeah, yeah, we but, did yeah. talk quite a bit about old equipment and resources. Um, but to, to reiterate, clearly... Uh, the scorpion key um <laughs> yeah what needs to be uh uh the, what, what's the globe one? Oh, the globe of ultimate knowledge yeah, yeah. that's yeah, definitely what go. needs the thing i can't remember that's obviously the one i'd want um, yeah, clearly obviously of course <laughs> yeah uh no i mean i actually really like to see if you want to get like the dumbest uh special object that i think they should bring back is from dc 75th anniversary bucket of water <laughs> oh i when, hate bucket of water when not carried a square containing this object is not considered hindering terrain because of this object oh, is considered water terrain instead it's oh, just dumb. a light object it's just oh. a light object that when it's set down it's <laughs> that square is water <laughs> oh, you know so what? you could be like I king shark yeah. and just holding a bucket of water set it down and like step in it and just like yep i'm in water now and i have the dolphin symbol 
can't shoot me. I'm in my bucket. Yeah. I, I like that. That's definitely something that needs to be. Actually, I want I, them to reprint it, though. I want an actual physical 3D object for that. So. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, um, check out our last episode. We definitely delved into quite a few and talked Objects about like what they could do and people. stuff like that. And last one on Discord here. Ben Jones asks, who is your favorite poison character in Hero Clicks? So my favorite um, is, number one, kind of anyone that you give the Red Lantern power battery to. Mm, but yeah. The, the team builds that I had when Poison still worked this way um, was when it happened at like the beginning of your turn and you could still move right. and whatever. You could still like sidestep and then... As long as, yeah, sidestep. Was um, I would equip Grasshopper with the Red Lantern-like stuff and I would give them all the double power action to jump off the map. And then they get slammed down on the map, anywhere on the map beginning of your turn and then i would have them just swarm pen poison somebody it obviously took build up to hand out all of the um constructs but you know what i'm talking about right the deadpool grasshopper he does yeah. this big old leap and then yeah. he leaves the it's map double power back. action yeah yeah something like that yeah and then you you place him anywhere on the map so i would just give him uh whatever i would give him you know then yeah i have like four or five of these guys they would all jump up come down and yeah it was awesome loved it uh you know and of course then they would all get it would all die but then they would uh come back to life the first one would and it was awesome um but yeah that was my favorite person to give the red lantern battery to to poison who is your favorite uh poison character in hero clicks that'd be oscar from the wwe set uh yep. smith and old this guy <laughs> no <laughs> smith and old poison, this guy. although i have given her access to poison just to like you know double up oh um, double down my actual if you want to strictly say poison one of my favorite poison pieces is the amazing spider-man rare man thing he's got Ooh. uh he can use poison when he does instead of dealing normal damage roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled for each adjacent opposing character on a result of one through three deal that character one on a four through five deal him two and on a six you deal him three so this was one of the few characters at the time that could, for free, like get past Impervious, get past Invuln, Invincible, uh, whatever. Because if you rolled a six, yeah, dealing three, it was just, it was kind of nuts. Um, I used to combo him with another one, the other uh, ADW man thing. Um, although his poison is not, I mean, it's just normal poison. He does have a stop click where he becomes giant. And can use sidestep. So, like Calder was saying, uh, pre-rules change, like 2017 rules change, I think. Um, when this man thing, the ADW one, would hit that stop click and become uh, giant, I could sidestep and place the rare one from Amazing Spider-Man. And then free roll my D6. And it was really cool. Because, I mean... It was kind of cool. It wasn't. It wasn't the craziest thing in the world. Obviously, like I, I didn't win a ton of games with this one trick, but it was a fun enough thing where I could just like, no action, drop this man thing down, uh, deal three damage. If they didn't have reducers, <laughs> it was just like really gross. Yeah, uh, ice. Yes, if I had to choose a character that has a uh, printed poison, I would go with the Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor. He has like a fifty point dial where he can um the beginning of the game choose which dial he wants to use and i liked the poison dial on one of them so yeah um that is all our discord questions but a lot of respect for anyone that plays man thing love love oh man we need new man thing so bad last one was seven years ago in adw or whatever seven six years ago yeah yeah we need a new yeah. one we've got new, the new Power Wars Wars battle world man ones thing. but those weren't oh that yeah wasn't, that, that wasn't ted it wasn't named yeah yeah that wasn't our boy ted Whatever his last name is, that was. I, I did Man just play thing. Man Thing and Howard the Duck. That's another figure uh, that should get a legacy me. card. That's a solid, yeah, that'd be awesome. Solid sculpt. Let's get yeah. more cool sculpts from like the old stuff back on tables, so people stop and they're like, "Why is there a little duck riding on that tree?" I'm like, "It's a yeah, Hobbit dude. for one, and one. it's an Ent for two. All right, <laughs> they're going to Isengard or yeah. Gondor, oh. whatever." place i don't know i'm not a nerd not some loser like lord of the rings uh anyways and last thing for our mailbag here we got a email from old andrew elliott and he says hello again gentlemen 
I'm sure you've seen it already, but the set poster. So he, he sent this to us like a, an hour after we maybe recorded <laughs> yeah. uh, last week. So if you've seen a, a trend, people weren't ready for us to record on a Friday last week, but we had to. There's news. Yeah, I can't wait for um, all the questions we get tonight. This right, being when like something crazy Friday. happens tomorrow. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I'm sure you've already seen it, but the set poster has dropped for the upcoming Disney Plus set. I loved the chases for War of the Realms, but the sculpts for them, not so much. And when I saw this poster, I was once again flabbergasted. I personally think these last two sets have been the most boring chase sculpts possibly ever. And coupled with the price hike, as I said, flabbergasted, the best piece in the set is probably going to be on Ultron. It's just kind of standing there. It could literally be the sculpt of a common, but otherwise, I'm really looking forward to the set. Did you guys have the same reaction to the last two sets as me regarding sculpts, or do you think I'm simply overreacting? As always, you guys are hilarious, and thanks for all your great Heroclix work. Well, thank you, uh, Andrew. We appreciate the email. As far as what if our Disney Plus goes, it's so easy to call it what if. Um, there are some straight bangers, like awesome sculpts in it, and there are some really lame sculpts, especially in the super rare and chase category. I think yeah. half the chases, I mean, besides like literally Agatha, Scarlet Witch, Captain America, and maybe Iron Man for just being big, I guess. The other half of the chases are all lame. Loki, Collector, Gamora, Ultron. You know, Ultron's going to look cool I and think, intimidating. Uh, but... I, okay, so I need closer details to really say. I think Gamora looks kind of cool. I mean, she's obviously like doing like a victory pose or like some sort of commander kind of pose. Yeah. So it's here's the thing. Um, what was it? House of X. They did a price increase. They said we're going to do bigger, more dynamic sculpts. And, like, you know, we've had, you know, issues with painting before. Uh, these bigger sculpts are going to allow us for more detailed, like, painting. And we're going to, like, make more dynamic stuff. Between the last, assuming uh, we're talking about Disney Plus and War of the Realms. Uh, War of the Realms for sure had some of the worst paint jobs I have seen really in quite bad. a while. Really it's bad. Some pretty, and this is, like, chases. Like, if you look on HD Realms the black widow chase is like so smudgy. I like, I think they outsourced it and this is me just being really hopeful. I really hope that they outsourced like the sculpting and like whatever, because the chase black widow, while it's a cool sculpt, I would have to strip the paint because you can see like the under layer below her skin. And so she's got like all these black smudge marks all over. And that's like a chase. Oh. That's like, you know, one oh, that you, man. The, the Human Torch, while it looks cool, the pedestal, like, cup, whatever thing that he's in oh. is just bland. It's like there's no well, detail. Not, it's not just... even that, but it's the fact that the that he is the same transparency and color as the flame. You just lose him. Yeah. You lose him in all of that. It yeah. really sucks. Um, the Chase Doctor Strange is, Ugh. like, bad. he's just, like, holding he's up bad. this big eye. It's so weird and i mean it's at least dynamic but then again like on his flight base because hc realms like you know we didn't have digital renderings for these so they used the actual figures on his flight base is brown dirt like not on purpose it's just painted co incorrectly um and like again this is like i'm just looking at just the chases because uh that's like where i see like where we should have had better paint jobs the rocket raccoon's feet blend into the ground. Again, it's like a chase. Yeah, and He's at least got a cool great. effect going on. It's okay. um, but yeah, his one glove is painted blue to match. Like it, it's not supposed to be painted blue. It's supposed to be red. But it like bled over from his jacket. Uh, there's just, and I, I mean, I can say this for the Spider Man's weird flight effect is like coming out of his thigh in a direction that makes zero sense. Like for this jump he's not yeah. swinging with this motion he's like shooting straight up somehow uh, it just makes zero sense um yeah i just i really hope they outsource these because i think war of the realms is some of the worst painting and sculpts since they did this bigger you know more money blah 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 now that being said we don't know if disney plus increase is because of the ip or like what exactly it is for um, starting with the super rares, I will say there's way too much blandness going on. Um, there is, yeah. We've got Agnes who is just holding a broom, looking like a generic witch, like 
if you told me that was actually a sculpt from World's Finest Witch, the common, I'd believe you because it's yeah. there's not any effects going on. Uh, it is a dynamic pose. I'll give them that. I don't think it belongs in the super rare like spl- slot uh, at all. Yeah, it's a rare. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of figures that are missing effects. Like this Miss Minutes, I hope it comes out somewhat transparent because she's supposed to be a hologram. So, yep. right? Like that should be the she transparent is, uh, thing. And it doesn't yep. look like it. Um, oh. President Loki, we've already talked about this. He's just like doing the one pose that he does. Again, a super rare, like croaky dial, ala, ala, go, gator, Loki, step whatever. I'm going to step on it. I'm going to step yeah. on everyone I ever see. <laughs> whatever he is. Does not belong in a super rare sculpt. Like if we're, Absolutely not. if the rarity determines, like how good the sculpts are, and we're going to start spending more time and effort to make like the, yeah. the sculpts better, we should really, like super rare should feel like you pulled something really cool. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, like Sakari and Iron Man should be one of the super rares. Like that's a Hydra's cool piece. Bumper. Watcher and Spider Man are the only super rares. Oh, and Falcon. Falcon. It's like yeah, Hydra's Bumper, Spider Man, Watcher, and Falcon are like the only super rares that have a super rare sculpt in this entire set. Yeah. At, like, if we're and, looking at as I mean, critically as possible, then yeah. I've seen this. Uh, what is this? Is this a rare Monica Rambo? That, yeah. I think that's a rare. Yeah. Or the yellow. The, yeah. yeah. She's rare. That is a thing that we've seen in like the comments. Oh, no. Side. She's not a rare. She's an uncommon. Is that enough? Masked okay. Bear, yeah, Masked Baron Zemo begins the rares, or Miss Minutes begins the rares. Okay. Well, at least then that's that makes sense. Yeah. There's yeah. actually, you know, the the worst part is, but I mean, like uh, Nebula, Loki, Power Broker, shift. all of those should be commons uncommon. They're all yeah. bad. The, yeah. the old man Loki, the Nebula, the Billy Maximoff, Power Broker, Sharon, uh, Miss Minutes, Party Thor. These are all like these are not rare sculpts. No. This, it's almost indistinguishable which of these yeah. like what rarity if you had just if you hit randomize on all these images and just shuffled them around it'd be well, pretty choose, hard like good. the pers- yeah. the ones i'd pick for chases would be falcon agatha harkness scarlet witch uh ultron infinity captain america and i like that's i don't know i don't yeah, even like everything else I'm would be pretty hard to some of the other chases i could see a argument for zombie cat being a chase yeah. over some of these other yeah. chases honestly like it's definitely a, like a dynamic sculpt and i mean at, at least different. it looks colored like impressively um, yeah it looks really looks like great the the sculpt on pietro maximoff is like like the little effect is pretty bland um like i don't know we and i i don't know the best way to add effects obviously but there's got to be something we can do because, yeah, man, just like have like you know Winter Soldier, the the super rare where he's just taking a swing, put like some motion to his arm or something. Like, yeah, I mean they do that for kicks and stuff. Like have put some... a put a hand in Loki Gator's mouth, you know, do something. Especially if you're gonna make it a super rare. Like if I'm paying close to eighteen dollars a booster. And I pull a super rare. I want it to feel like it's worth that because yeah, I will say the price increase combined with sculpts and paint jobs that I could have expected from four years ago. Not, yeah, not super impressed. I'll, I'll fill the swallow. So yeah, I mean, Andrew, we are I'm right there with you. These, these sculpts are a real bummer. Uh, especially after they say, you know, new and improved sculpts, like that's what you're paying for and everything. And it's like, they're bigger. They are definitely bigger, yeah. but and improve. I, like I wouldn't have these complaints had they said we have to increase prices because the cost of production is going up. Like our industry right. just has like to make a profit. We will have to increase price. I'd respect that. And I'd understand that. But if you're going to give me like this, you know, we're going to do more dynamic and more, uh, I don't know, detailed sculpts. And then you give me war of the realms with some of the worst paint jobs I've ever seen. Some of the most boring, like just standing there figures I've ever seen. And then you do Disney plus, which should have just absolutely been like knocked out of the park. And some, I, I'm not, I don't want to bash on it too bad because some of these sculpts are so cool. Like they're some of the best sculpts in hero clicks ever, uh, like top, you know, 50 or something who knows um yeah 
it's just, you know, when my super rare is man doing a punch that could be supplemented, like that could just yeah. be one of the yeah. like soldiers that Ares kicks out. Like that's how bland that Bucky sculpt is, that winter soldier sculpt. And that's a super rare. I'm like, ah, I just don't know. I don't know what would be better. Like, you know, I, I want a winter soldier that's a super rare, but I want him to be like really cool. I don't know. Give me him the sculpt of him swinging uh, John Walker. <laughs> like that would have been a super rare worthy sculpt. That would have been chase worthy sculpts. That would yeah. be hilarious. going to hit this dude with another dude. <laughs> it's so good. Like, yeah, there's good detailing. Assuming that the, like the paint jobs and everything come through, the detail work on these is really solid. Uh, it's just the the dynamic status or whatever you want to call it is what's lacking for me. Um, yeah. Just give me a little bit more flair. Give me more, more movement, more, you know, obviously hero clicks aren't articulatable, articulable. I don't know, whatever you can't move them. So it'd be cool to get like some sort of indication as to what they're doing. Right. Gosh, I would have like, and you know, even like, I'm biased. I like John Walker, but I would have killed for a sculpt of like him, like throwing the shield, post throwing the shield. The uh, sculpt that he has is sort of like when he like uh, pops in that one doorway and kind of how he looks. But I would have, I would have killed for a, a bloody shield. Uh, oh like yeah, like him over over the head. I guess it's before it actually has blood on, but like an over the head, like bringing it down. But that's a very specific one, so I get not doing something yeah. like that. And then we could have called still, it Guillotine Walker. Oh, that'd been awesome. They're awesome. He didn't cut his head off. He just uh, concaved his chest. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It so wasn't instantaneous. Better. It was just no, slow and it was agonizing. Blunt force trauma. Yeah. Well, he's a terrorist, so it's okay. Um, anyway. Was he? I don't know. Was he? he was a terrorist. Okay. It, anyone anyone associated with the watchdogs is definitely anyways. Uh, not the watchdogs, excuse me. Uh the watchdogs are too, but uh Smashers Ultimatum. Anyways, that is our last listener question. Simeon, what a good time. What a fun podcast. Uh, ranking figures, mission points, talking more nonsense about Disney Plus. Yeah. Boy, I can't wait for Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, I I need more information for sure. I would, and you know, I hate to be like negative about Disney Plus. But for anyone that's looking to pre-purchase or put down like whatever, I would definitely hold off till we see some dials. Um, The one that we've seen is Spider-Man. And I will say based off of that one, if every figure in this set is on that level, this is going to be like a A minus set for me. It's going to be probably one of the best sets in modern history, like or in modern memory in modern (laughs) and yeah in modern modern history you know since like the 1940s um yeah that being said if we get like the wonder woman 80 dials where there's big blank spaces where there's some like you know just no flavor if batrock is like charge combat reflexes uh exploit and that's it be so mad yeah if it's something like that where it's just you know these figures, you could just alternate their names or sculpts and they could fit on any previous dial or whatever. If there's no yeah. flavor to be had, if it turns out looking like the Thor Ragnarok movie set, oh, well, please then this no. set please will no. bomb. And I, I will be very sad because I, if that happens, if like, you know, the majority of them are like that, I'm going to be really sad because I'm yeah. not going to buy a whole lot. I'm probably also, not going to buy uh, anything like- but singles. Legacy cards aren't looking like they're going to happen for this set. They're yeah, totally that's another thing that's that really text. killing it for me. Is so, they they had so many opportunities and yeah, Wiz kids, if you could just just one thing for me, just do one thing for me, give us back buy it by the case, and do it for this set. That's the only way I would buy two cases of the set. Really, the only way. Um, I mean, I'd do it if right now it's if they like really knock it out eight. of the park with the dials. Oh yeah, if they really knock it out of the park with dials. Yeah, if like yeah. If I see every, you know, every other figure in the set is playable, like either casual or competitive for me, where like they bring something new, they're not just generic, 
you know, I still have no idea what Skinny Steve will do. Hopefully he... I, I don't know, yeah. You can, like, remove him and put him on, like, the second half of the dial for Hydra Stomper, Stomper or something. Yeah, I assume something like that. Uh, maybe yeah. Secret Identity. I mean, very yeah. well could be a Secret Identity character, you know? I can absolutely see that. But, but we'll see. Yeah. Shall see. I would just say, you know, do what you want, but obviously I would hold off until we start seeing some of these dials because... We've got one real solid one to look, go off of. Yeah. But we've had that before where the, the LE does something neat and then a bunch of the set is just meh. Yeah, dude. And after all, he's made some really cool pogs. And if you want really cool pogs, action tokens, bystanders, all that stuff, you can join our Patreon. Uh, we've got some awesome Patreon goals right now. I've redone some of the Patreon. I need to do redo a little bit more to make it consistent. Consistent. Um, but we have a new $300 uh, goal, which I would really like to get. Uh, we are like $77 away from that or something, which is really, really cool. And uh, right now the Patreon is at like one skit video a month. I had to change that from one live action gameplay video a month just because with Simeon and I's schedules with living two hours-ish apart, uh, it's just really difficult to have a live action game and film that every single month especially something to the extent of extreme rules or hot ones or something like that so um that's tough but i definitely want live action games to be more of a every three months or so a really fun wacky live action game but at the very least there will be some type of skit video every month and i i want this to be the case anyways because i want to delve into the history of hero clicks with like the pitch meeting series uh, or just other fun random skit videos. So uh, that one has been there. And if so, if you just want to support the show, and if you want to get awesome pogs, action tokens, we talked a lot about uh, Hella, the Wrecking Crew, Ultron, all that stuff. Uh, we have Ultron drone bystanders that you can get on our Patreon. We have the Wrecking Crew, all of them. Our good friend Ed Shelton from the Starting Over podcast helped us uh, get these Wrecking Crew bystanders, which is really awesome. So I'm excited for those. Uh, and by excited, I mean I've already had them. Haven't played with them yet, but I love them. Uh, we also have, like I said, Ultron Drones. We have Dragar Warriors, Dragar Dragger, however you want to say it, Viking Dudes. Um, and we even have uh, Ares ones, too. So we have whatever, uh, Allied and German Soldiers in the form of the Allied Ranch Hand and the Billion Clicks Bruce Soldier, which is really cool. So we have all sorts of awesome bystanders, action tokens and stuff, uh, and really cool stickers that you can all get on our Patreon. It is a heck of a deal. Um once you like look at like start comparing prices and everything so if you guys want to support us we would greatly appreciate that if you want to send us any questions you can do so on twitter or facebook all that link and stuff is in the description below send us an email like andrew did at dial h for hero clicks at gmail.com um, and also if you do join our patreon really quickly you will be able to join our discord which is where a lot of other people send us questions which is really cool and we have a good time on the discord and it's always it's always super fun. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. We got 822 subscribers. That is awesome. Hopefully, everyone that listens to the podcast here is subscribed because if you want cool gameplay, cool updates, great unboxing videos, like I said, probably at least going to unbox a case, if not more, of Disney+. Plus. And Disney+, Plus might become my new Supernova where I buy a bunch of this and just have it in back stock, and then I open one booster every time I do an unboxing uh, just because to try to chase those god packs I think would be kind of a cool thing to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so like, that, that could be fun, you know? Um, but, yeah, let us know, guys. Let us know. But please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do all that stuff. All my plugging is done. I'll leave it to Simeon. All right. And if you want to check out some some solid deals... You should check out coolstuffing.com where currently they've got bricks of empire for 89.99 which is That's a good price pretty solid you know what else is 89.99 from empire is uh the good old the ultron pim uh super rare prime so yeah. you know if you like gambling a little maybe get your ultron prime uh and a whole nine other boosters uh, yeah, it's a solid price. I might actually pick up some of them because there's still some stuff from that set that I want, and uh, it's good trade Perfect. fodder. But it's yeah, really it's tempting. almost almost half price, not quite, but almost MS, half of MSRP at least. Uh, yeah, eighty nine ninety nine. I don't know when this sale ends, but yeah, check it out at coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks. No. Are you serious? 
Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how six yeah. how people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trail.